It's already on. Good morning, everybody. Let's be more than a special meeting on April 2nd. Madam Chair, would you roll call? Madam Clerk, would you roll call? Mr. Jackson, I'm to be here. Mr. Train, here. Mr. Croft, here. Ms. Dombowski, Present. Mr. Dunbar? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Flynn? Present. Mr. Peterson? Here. Mr. Starr? Here. Mr. Steele? Here. Mr. Weber? Here. Edison. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can you read us in the presentation? Like allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'm 4A, discussion of the Rural Beach Renewable Energy Unit matter. I believe the mayor has some comments. Thank you very much, um, Madam Chair, Member of the Assembly. Um, I, we have um, discussed this issue and we're going to have a public hearing on this issue today. Um, the Regulatory Commission of Alaska approved the sale of the Blue River Unit from Conco to Mission Bay Ranch 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 Ranch
and then Jim was so you're exactly correct. There would be a slight offset because we would have, you know, if we kept the money in the DR, in the in the municipal cash pool, we'd be receiving some slight return on that versus what we would pay to borrow. And Jim, uh, actually, the interest that is earned on the, the money goes in back into the DRLGS, so that in addition to the funds are owed to the ratepayers. So the municipality or MLP do not lose out on any interest. Those funds go back into the fund to be able to uh, give back to the rate payers at a future date. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Steele, just a um, Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, I'd like um, maybe to step back just a little bit here. We have three new members who are not privy to our uh, executive sessions on this matter just to give them a little background on what we're talking about here and I want to be very careful about not stepping into areas I'm not supposed to speak to um, so if I could take just a brief pause to talk to Mr. Falsey and make sure I'm allowed to talk about things I would like to explain to them I think that would be I'll take a, a two-minute two minute recess. Can we do that? Move for a two-minute recess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. So for the benefit of our new members, this happens to be where I live. Uh, I've done a lot of work in this space and um, in my private sector career. And um, Conoco put up a, a multi-asset uh, package for bid. Uh, we had, I would say, robust discussion. <laughs> in this room as to exactly what we would bid on. And what we decided was that we would bid specifically on this piece, which is the, uh, the, the third share of uh, the newer assets that Conco Phillips uh, was selling. Um, there was some back and forth. Uh, this is what we have in front of us. Um, it, essentially mirrors what we, the municipality, did on when we purchased assets in 1996, um, which was considered a high risk um, purchase at the time, and has paid off well, hence the assets you're looking at. If you look at page uh, three of your memo, Sorry. Um, yeah, it, page one of the memo. Uh, it, it, the eighty-two million dollars came from the proceeds of those sales uh, that we made using those assets. Um, so this is kind of a big gulp for three guys who just joined us, <laughs> but. But we, I just want to assure you that we have spent a lot of time on this, and uh, you're not taking a, a giant leap into the unknown. You, you know, we have we have really spent a lot of time on this area. So with that, I have a few questions. Um, I actually read the RCA findings this morning, um, uh, and. My, so my first question is, what's the expected pace of replenishing uh, the NGP and DRLGS accounts based on this purchase? Uh, we'll begin this year. Uh, any gas sales that we would make to third parties, 
and we have two contracts that come along with this one that is Chugach uh, for this year and then one that is in star and any revenue from those sales will go back into the fund there could be somewhere between 15 and 20 million dollars that go back into the fund this year and then going forward any uh, gas sales that we would make would be used to uh, replenish the fund and our projections so that the fund grows fairly quickly so you expect in the next year we'll have 15 to 20 million dollars back in the uh, in the DRGL staff. There's a very good possibility that, that is in fact the case. It could be more, could be slightly less. Um, I've read with interest um, Commissioner McAlpine's dis partial dissent. <laughs> Do you have any comments on that? No. <laughs> Let me expound a bit. <laughs> he was concerned about the timing of our filing. His procedural concerns, I don't think, are really material to our conversation here today. I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody about that. I'd rather do that privately if I could be in full board. Fair enough. That's all, Madam Chair, for now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Mr. Scott. I don't know exactly the ruling that you're talking about, but what the RCA recently claimed was that our cash position wasn't strong enough in defense of the ratepayers, and we raised our rates because, you know, I'm probably paraphrasing incorrectly to a certain degree, but now the RCA, not saying that I agree or disagree, seems to feel it's okay to pull down our cash reserves, but is that because they feel that they're the full faith and credit of the municipality and not necessarily MLNP? Would you like to make Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Starr, if I might. The uh, Deferred Regulatory Gas Liability Sales Account was an account established by the RCA specifically for future gas purchases or for capital replacement. So it was really intended only for that. There were some questions that had been placed before the RCA. Mark could speak to this perhaps more. Uh, but. It really, it was, a, it was a dedicated account. The money was coming in from gas sales, from gas we weren't, we were, we were producing, but not actually using ourselves. Mm -hmm. and so we tucked it away in a capital account, which sat in our municipal cash pool, um, until such time as a proper use could be found. And in this case, the RCA said, purchasing this additional gas is one of the things they originally anticipated, and it's a proper use of the money. So what will happen then is that, and then I'm fairly familiar with reading the annual reports of this entity, particularly as a cash position and some of that. So as MLMP then acquires this, or in terms of the, the asset becoming the municipally owned asset, will that strengthen our position in, in the views of the RCA on the more global topic that they feel like, you know, we're, we're a stronger position now? Uh, and I'll paraphrase it with the comment, do we still have this obligation to sort of do those secret gas purchases on the Maverick market, or will this eliminate those? Uh, through the chair, I think the, the concern that the RCA expressed had to do with the debt equity ratio mm -hmm. of the um, utility. And this will have no effect on the debt equity because we had equity in the form of cash, although it was restricted. And we will now have equity in the form of gas um, that we have as an asset. The uh, we believe that it will strengthen the utilities position over the long run because as we uh, are able to sell some of the excess gas in the early years that will be a will as uh, mr flynn asked about the replenishment of the fund so it will build up the cash reserves mm -hmm. those reserves will be there to either fund uh, at least currently to fund uh, capital expenditures in the field or to buy down future gas prices uh, in the for our customers there is currently a document that's ongoing u15097 uh, which talks uh, about the proper use of the drlgs and so that could change those two uses of the fund in the future but we're unaware of what the RCA will do with that particular document at this time. Well, it just it seems that they've steered away from judging whether this is a, a useful uh, opportunity for us to bolster our asset base position stronger. So I, I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't recognize that 
that we've strengthened our position and, and we control our own gas um, field, so to speak. So that asset, much like any larger asset, becomes a bottom line number. Um, so I, I'm, I'm for the action, certainly. I want to make sure that we get the full bang for the buck. To answer the second part of the question, then, when we had to go to spot market purchases, and I'll say Mr. Posey and I got into it oftentimes because we weren't privy to how much the market was uh, being paid for spot market purchases, uh, bridge, bridge purchases, perhaps when gas was tight. Will that, will that go away then, those type of purchases and the authorization that you have to do those? We will still maintain the authorization for short-term deals, and most of that would be done as interruptible gas contracts. Uh, we anticipate over the next uh, several years we won't need to exercise that option because we will have enough gas from our current one-third share plus the additional share that we are, are trying to acquire that will provide 100% of our gas needs. And in fact, we'll have some additional gas that we could uh, potentially sell to someone yeah, else. Yeah, I would hope so. So uh, that's always been a problem for me in terms of needing not not keeping people warm or making electricity, certainly, but sort of that shrouded conversation that occurs, you know, perhaps over cigars and the table going, yeah, we'll buy this gas. So if we could get out of that business through this purchase and control the field or else be on the other side of that cigar smoking table and do the negotiating, I'd be happy to have that. Can I talk a little bit more, just Madam Chair, about the balance sheet? As I read the reports, I don't personally remember seeing the large number associated with the with the deferred liability gas sales inside your ba balance sheet for MLMP. Is it in there? It is. It, it shows as restricted. Uh, restricted capital? Yes. I see. So it's not really called the DRLRGS On our fund. financial statements, it is not. The published financial statements is not referred to as the DRLGS. I see. What's the total amount in that dedicated to the DRLGS? Are we wiping it out? With this, uh, if we are allowed to move forward with this, we will take the bulk of it out. We will end up with potentially about $7 million left. So if we have a major capital crisis in the MLMP turbine or something else goes on in the larger uh, ability to use that money, is it restricted to gas field type of capital improvements only, or are we protected in other types of gas delivery systems that we have using that money? And if we had a problem, what would we use for money? It is specifically restricted to the use in gas field assets. We have in the past taken underlift settlements with the blessing of the regulatory commission and use them in a situation like that when we replaced unit three at plant one. Okay, can I keep going just for one question as I have as relates to the overall municipal cash pool amount, if we're talking about the municipal cash pool at $579 million or whatever it is, and now we're taking a chunk of $120 million out of there, what does the overall market think about the municipality's health having a reduced municipal cash pool uh, basis as it relates to our bonding authority, our emergency reserves, and all the other stuff that goes into having a healthy cash balance as that. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, may I answer Mr. Steele? I'm start. Um, we're going to be in fine shape with, in terms of liquidity. Uh, the markets, uh, I mean, this has been essentially carved out as a, as a, uh, as a restricted fund. Mm -hmm. So the, the markets will look at that money and know that it's really only dedicated for specific use, namely the purchase of BRU gas or capital assets for BRU. So um, I don't anticipate any change, any uh, modification to our um, to the strength and financial position. Of but to Mr. Market. Steele's point, it was blended in the overall five hundred and some million dollar cash pool, correct? It's it, it, yes, it's part yeah. of the cash pool, um, but it's yeah, but it's, I, I stranded money, I guess, in a way. I mean, it's, it's carved out. We, we, yeah. So when the markets go look at that, they know that that has a dedicated purpose. So after you wire this money, what's the ending cash balance of the of the municipal cash pool? I think we're going to have, uh, and I might be wrong, I have my um, investment manager here, um, I think we're going to be close to uh, about 50, is that done right? 50 well, million? Brian, there will be about uh, 500 million still between um, our share and Enough to weather any big crisis we would have and keep our investment portfolio. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair. Um, this 
Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the gentleman that was speaking, I couldn't hear his answer. Can somebody repeat that for me? Uh, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Richardson, the investment Can you manager. Get a little closer, so you just let Robert. Yes, uh, that was uh, Mr. Bosky. Uh, that was uh, you, Mr. Mr. Richardson, yeah. who's the investment manager for the municipality. He indicated there's um, just over $500 million remaining in the, in the municipal cash pool. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Madam Chair. And so I'm wondering, is this is this going to have any effect on, on the RCA's ruling that we couldn't take a dividend from MLP? Uh, you know, is that it's going to not affect its near term or long term? Um, Madam Chair, is that the, the yeah. Uh, we believe that this won't have an effect on that. However, we believe that because it provides long-term stability in both our gas supply and gas pricing, that it will help us to get the dividend back in a more expeditious manner. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Peterson. Mr. Colton, can you be brief? I really need to know what to say. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a point of process I wanted to bring the new assembly members up to speed that this will, when we open the public hearing today, be the third public hearing the assembly has held on the BRU matter generally, and the fourth public process last fall we came to the assembly, which resulted in uh, an approval in AR 2015-260S to bid on the asset and to purchase it. We then subsequently came back to the assembly and asked to use the Wells Fargo short-term debt facility. That was approved in AR 2016-61. The effect of the Assembly's action today would be allow us to consummate the purchase, not from the borrowed money, which turns out to be more expensive than we thought it would be, but from a approved source of funds that the RCA had just blessed. Uh, the RCA process was a six-week process <coughs> with lawyers and counsel, and that is wrapped up earlier this Tuesday. So this is, in some ways, just the ministerial act of putting to bed what we asked the Assembly for a blessing to do, and which we received earlier this week on Tuesday. Thank you, Mr. Assembly Resolution 2016-127 will be in a resolution appropriating $112 million to the municipal cash pool for the purchase of time for Phillips Alaska East interest in property within the Beluga River unit to municipal life and power. Public hearing is now open. Anyone wish to be heard? Please come forward. Say your name. Spell your last name. You have three minutes. Sure. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom McGrath, MCGRATH. Uh, can you hear Ms. Tombowski? Uh, yep, I can hear it just fine. Yeah, it's Mr. McGrath. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chairman, members of the Assembly, my name is Tom McGrath. I'm very concerned about the passage of AR 2016-127. Um, not that we're doing it the, the, man, the manner. The Anchorage community has had, had uh, I think, fairly little input in the purchase of a portion of the blue good gas field. This process as compared to when we bought the first portion of the field is minuscule in nature and a lot of this has been done in executive session. When the first portion of the gas field was purchased, the discussion both public and in front of the assembly was extensive and of course then we had two newspapers so there's a lot of information out this time to very little. Uh, even so for uh, it was only passed by a vote of five to four with the mayor, as I remember it on the fence as to whether we veto it or not. I do not know, because I don't have access to all the documents, whether this is a good deal or a bad deal, because the public hasn't been given enough information on this to make some decision. I do know that MLP is owned by the citizens of Anchorage, but this action, as I understand it, only benefits the ratepayers. Another concern is this meeting is being held in limited notice just 24 hours and not on your regular agenda. I think that all things that you do should be able to stay in the light of day. I'm also concerned that three of your mem of your number was just sworn in on Tuesday and could not possibly be up to speed on this issue. So they should recuse themselves from voting today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Mr. McGrath, I always appreciate your comments and your consistent uh, attendance at our meetings. Um, I'll just ask that you trust that this uh, transaction 
had a lot of input from those who understand how these things work. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Madam Chair, I have a couple of questions. I, I have you in the queue, Mr. Bosky. Uh, I'll defer to Mr. Bosky. Okay, great, Mr. Bosky. Okay, um, I just um, first will just ask if um, the administration can just address um, the public's concern as why we had to special notice this for today and why it couldn't wait till Tuesday. Um, yes, um, uh, through the chair, Mr. Bosky. Um, the we received written notification uh, yesterday at about four o'clock of the RCA's decision, uh, the written order. So this is, um, we didn't want to presume what the RCA would decide with respect to the DRLGS gas fund. Um, so this is really our earliest opportunity. Today we are trying to um, wire the money today to finish the close today. Uh, the prior, um, anyway, that's, that's, why we're, that's why we're here doing this today. We can save a fair chunk of change if we do this today. So what you're saying is there's a significant amount of money by closing today versus closing on Wednesday. Next yes, week. right. By closing okay. today, by, by being able, by passing this today, we'll save uh, uh, between three hundred and six hundred thousand dollars by not having That's to by not having to set up the short-term borrowing program sure. by using the municipal cash pool. Thank you, Mr. Harris. That was um, a good answer. <laughs> Um, and then I have um, just a historical question that I think you can answer for me, or uh, Mr. Johnson, I'm sure can. Um, and I know I know the answer to this. I'm just not recalling it. When we originally bought the interest in Beluga, um, how much did we pay? How long did it take for us to recoup that original purchase price? And then since that purchase, what has been the positive value of the investment, the first set of it? Uh, through the chair, uh, Ms. Dabowski, the original purchase was uh, $120 million, and over the life of the field, over the last 20 years, uh, the field has recouped that original investment as well as saved the taxpayers $239 million, and in addition to that has paid for $69 million of capital improvements at BRU and uh, the DRLGS and other associated funds have uh, currently in excess of $90 million. So you would add the 239 plus the 69 plus the 90, or are you saying the positive value after we recoup the cost of the initial investment was 239? I would say that uh, after we recouped the original investment, uh, we have provided value of approximately four hundred million dollars. Oh, that's what I was going for before. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Anything else, Mr. Bosley? No, ma'am, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Bosley. Mr. Flynn. Yeah, I'm sorry, I should ask this question earlier. But uh, I think it's important to understand that the Beluga Gas Fund is a non-profit organization. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
resolutions appropriating over $100,000 not through separate notice requirements. So, uh, in fact, the code reads in 23060, the Assembly may set public hearings on proposed resolutions at such time and with such public notice as the Assembly may determine. So the special notice, the, the notice requirement for a special meeting is 24 hours. We have moved quickly here because we saw an opportunity to save significant amounts of money, and this is a unique circumstance in that we have now the three public hearings and a six-week litigated public interest hearing in the RCA. So it's not a practice that we're hoping to make routine, but it is one that we thought it was in the public interest to take advantage of here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as my comments were tempered when we talked about the overall purchase concept in general of the field, um, partly because of the issue Mr. Flynn raised on our competitive nature, I commend the administration, quite frankly, for being able to stay with it um, and get, get on the topic to the benefits of, of all of us as it relates to the municipal um, cash pool, the use of it, and the assets that strengthen our community. So. Kudos to the administration for uh, legally wrangling, financially wrangling it, managing it into the future and all that. That's a very um, appropriate thing for government to do and in terms of diversifying its strength for next generations and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that we've done it. I'm not so pleased that all of the municipality and the new members will hear me from time to time talk about some of the differences in the Chugiak Eagle River area. It's not particularly um, related to the service districts or our drive down the highway, what it's related to is that MEA is our primary power producer and, and uh, that's where we spend our money. Currently, we pay about 12 to 15 percent more for electricity produced to the municipality residents in my district uh, with, quite frankly, I'm getting more, more vocal on it, with not very good customer service. And so I would hope that we can entertain the conversation as MLMP grows. You've got the Sullivan plant coming on with excess capacity, the ability to be a regional conversation uh, with the MLNP model. You guys are quite the company now and, and have been for quite some time. So I'll be more vocal about the ability to, to expand our territory where it become uh, profitable for the entity and as the means can be. Certainly we would have to buy out assets and all the other stuff, but much like we just did now, if they produce a return uh, back to the overall package and produce what the municipality um, needs. Again, the municipal cash pool is owned by all the residents. The full faith and credit, uh, the asset is owned by that. We, as Mr. Peterson does, I'll summarize, um, the residents of Chugiak Eagle River um, lost greater probably than most when the dividend went away. Because quite frankly, the dividend allowed operational dollars, reduced taxes, all the other stuff. So the, the uh, 35, 40,000 residents of Chugiak Eagle River, customers of MEA pay more uh, we don't see the municipal dividend payment as strong as it, as it used to be in the past. And I see a, a growing trend in the MLNP ability to be customer service driven to, mind you, the, the largest and fastest growing area of, of our municipality. We need to keep up. And so if MEA can't do it, I would hope MLNP does. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Starr. Mr. Evans. I don't see Mr. Evans. I just wanted to. Uh, Mr. McGrath suggested that uh, the three new assembly members shouldn't vote on this because we don't haven't had the history. But my understanding is this is not really approving the purchase at all. That's all been done. We're just saying how do we finance it. It seems fairly simple that it's out of an expensive way or a much cheaper way. So uh, is there a history here where we would refuse ourselves for, for any reason with this panel? No. Not to my knowledge. Thank you, Mr. Wells and Mr. Clark. Yeah, I, I don't feel we should refuse ourselves, we should vote, but we should vote with um, adequate information. There's a lot of indications to me following this, uh, never an executive session, but just as a member of the public, that this is a very good purchase. Um, our prior success in 96, <coughs> the fact that we have two gaps participation, which is somewhat of a reality check on ours, um, the prior hearings that this body uh, has done, the, the mayor's due diligence, and then the executive session, which I say a little um, I have, just in the time we've had, read the RCA uh, dissent, and, and I, I know, as I said, what, what a member of the public might know. But I don't think I know enough uh, to vote uh, yes on this, and uh, it's safer, in my opinion, when you don't, to, to vote no. I wanted to explain that that is not 
an implied criticism of this deal. I think it was probably a good deal. And I think I could probably vote yes on Tuesday that the testimony here was that would have a cost of between three hundred and six hundred thousand dollars If there's a, a sufficient amount of support amongst the assembly members that have participated in the second session, then you can move forward. If my vote is needed to do that, I frankly need more time to uh, assure myself uh, of some of the things that were suggested. So um, as of now, well, I think I can very much on Tuesday vote yes, I'll vote no. I just wanted to let the body know so that if my vote was needed, we could do it on Tuesday. Thank you, Mr. Cole. I don't see anyone else in the queue. Madam Clerk, could you take a voice vote, please? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Mr. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Train? Yes. Mr. Croft? No. Ms. Dembowski? Yes. Mr. Dunbar? Yes. Mr. Abbott? Yes. Mr. Flint? Yes. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Starr? Yes. Mr. Steele? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. The motion passes. That's the next one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Second.